Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Panos webinar series. Our topic today is operations. My name is James Petroselli. I've been an account coordinator here at Panos for almost a year now, and I've been fortunate enough to work on many interesting projects with a diverse group of clients, and at first hand seen some of the challenges that banks and credit unions face when it comes to marketing operations. I'm joined today by two of our account executives, Ryan Weber and Carolyn Pittman, and I will now give them a chance to talk a little bit about themselves before we get started. And Ryan, why don't you start? All right, cool. <laughs> uh, my name is Ryan Weber. I'm a senior account executive here at Panels. I've been here for six years, almost seven this summer. I've worked with a plethora of different size uh, financial institutions are in ranging from New England all the way over to the left coast, uh, kind of inst credit unions, banks, the whole whole gambit. It's been pretty fun uh, and learning a lot of stuff and how even different things change throughout from where you are in the country and how well, one thing works here but does not work somewhere else. So it's always fun to kind of keep in the back of your head. Carol? Yeah, uh, I'm an account executive here. I've been here for almost four years now. Um, working with clients from you know, one branch all the way up to 30. Um, and before that, I was at another institution for 12 years in their marketing department, um, really focused on business and real estate and auto. So sort of have some experience on both sides. Well, thank you both for the introductions. So just to introduce today's topic of operations, when it comes to bank marketing, it can sometimes feel like you have to jump through hoops to get every department on the same page. So although marketing might be front and center for your customers and marketplace, it's not always as apparent for the other departments in your organization. So we're glad that you joined us today as we walk through some of the common roadblocks that marketers face and how to attribute marketing efforts, prove that mar marketing efforts are working and to also be an advocate for your team at the board and C-suite level. So let's jump right in and start to discussing. Uh, my first question is for both of you. Um, can you both talk a little bit about how different departments don't always understand marketing and its importance and why uh, why may different departments think digital marketing, marketing does not work? And um, Carolyn, why don't you start? Yeah. I, um... I give uh, lending departments a lot of grief. Um, my clients will, will tell you I'm constantly ragging on mortgage, but I think, you know, every department in a bank has really different roles and there are challenges in terms of, you know, what you're really focused on. You know, lending is looking to make their numbers and to bring in certain things. And marketing's more focused on getting those leads in and having those lenders do their jobs and make those conversions. Um, and so there's a lot of, you know, I want, I want to see the ads. I want to know what you're doing. I want my face to be visible. And that's not always, that shouldn't be the way that digital marketing works. Um, honestly, your lenders should never see your ads. Um, <laughs> that's true. If, if they're seeing them, it either means that, okay, good, they're, they're in the market for whatever you're selling, or it means that you're targeting it correctly. So I think there's sort of that disconnect sometimes with digital because they're not seeing it. And they feel, hey, I, I don't see what you're doing. What are you doing for me? Um, and so there's this level of education. You have to work with them and say, hey, these are, these are your goals. These are how we're going to meet them. You're not going to see the ads. You'll see the results. Yeah, and like I kind of like, to you know, play off of that, I know a lot of times marketing doesn't get the recognition that someone, and I'm not going to say any division or any section, department of an uh, institution, but I know they don't necessarily get the love when it comes to the success of a campaign. Uh, a lot of people don't see the marketing as something real, but every once in a while, I've, I've, I know, actually I don't think I've worked with one myself, but I know internally we did one where we shut off a campaign and you could just see everything just plummet. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, see, you know, marketing is doing what it needs to do. They're, we're bringing people to you and we just need to be able to close that up. Uh, so I think that works really well. And also I think kind of playing off of getting everyone on board and making sure that everyone knows how this is supposed to work. And it's not just one division telling 
marketing, this is what you're going to do. Because nine times out of 10, the people that want you to do something, they haven't done the research. And so they don't see the environment out there. They don't see that, oh, you know what? This doesn't work anymore. We don't want to do these type of ads. We want to make sure we're doing programmatic. These are what's going to work best for this specific topic. Or we've done search trends, and this is showing us that we really need to focus over here. This is what people are really searching for right now. So I think it kind of helps to be able to push back to everybody within the uh, you know institution of this is what we're seeing, and this is how we think would work best for you guys. So I think that's that's the thing is key. Absolutely, and that's why that support is so important when talking about marketing um, to the different departments in in financial institutions for sure. So um, now let's talk about budgets. Um, how do you approach discussing budgets with your clients? And can you give any examples? Um, Ryan, why don't you start this one? Okay. Um, I want to give two precise examples so no one feels like we're talking about them. Uh, but I know a lot of times there will be a set budget and a set goal without any real research as to what they're trying to do and what and how to achieve this. So we'll have a, we need to bring in X many loans without realizing like to do this, we really need to push these five elements. Let's, we need to do email campaign. We need to do digital ads. We do print ads, you know, you know, radio, you know, streaming video, anything like that. That topic is usually not brought up at the very top level when these are set. Mm -hmm. And so they'll have a budget of, you know, $5,000 and they need to bring in, you know, hundred million. I know it's not remotely realistic, but like that kind of concept where what they're asking you to do doesn't work with the amount of money that they're given. And so usually it helps out to really kind of sit down and have a discussion as what you're trying to do. What is that goal? And if that's even feasible versus someone saying, ah, I think we need this much money. Let's do that. And not, you know, really kind of talk it through. Um, yeah, um, Carolyn, what do you think? I mean, it, it's tricky. And I think a lot of it comes down to sort of, you know, your budget starts in January, but you should really be talking about the next year, hopefully as early as August, um, because then, then what you can do is you can sit down with each of the departments and you can sit down with sort of the C-level and say, okay, what are the goals for next year? And then you sort of take all of those goals, you regroup, you, you know, talk to Panos, we, we give you some options. We say, these are ideal budgets. These are okay budgets. These are that are doable budget like you, you get those levels you know based on what the goals are um but then you can really make it appropriate to the campaign because some things are just more expensive than others and it doesn't make sense to say okay mortgage is going to get x business is going to get x they're all going to get the same amount because they're all you know the same they're not things are things are more expensive when you're trying to get one thing over another but then on top of that i think it's really important for marketing to sort of defend their budget there's 100 i've run into so many times where you know everything gets thrown into that marketing general ledger line because other departments don't want to pay for it or it could kind of maybe be marketing um when i was at the credit union you know I got something thrown into my budget. It was my business team took a bunch of people out for lobsters. It's not marketing. That's, that's business development, clear and simple. That should go not in the marketing GL. So it's really watching your budget, making sure things aren't getting put in there that shouldn't be. When your departments want, you know, we want golf balls for the entire year. Say, okay, this is the golf balls for the entire year budget. These are as many golf balls as you're going to get. So figure out how you're going to divvy them up through the year. Um, but it's really important that marketing and advertising be the primary part of the marketing budget. 100%. And I think actually following up on that is it helps to, for us to have a conversation and show like an ROI, you know, like, you know, your budget is X, you know, this is going to bring you in so much money. But we really need to, like, to be effective, yeah, we can drop and have every digital ad running at this budget. That's not going to do anything. You're going to, you know, go through your budget like that. We really need to raise it up or double it to really be effective. And I think having that conversation really helps. For sure. It's always a difficult conversation. Um, and sort of related to my first question, this question is for Ryan. Um, obviously, marketing will drive the lead to a bank or a credit union. But that can only take us so far. 
So Ryan, can you talk a little bit about how important it is for other departments to help with conversion once marketing has played their part? Of course. So, it, you know, I, there's a client that I work with that, you know, I'll talk to them when I kind of get, you know, every couple of weeks when we have a chat, like how, how is this campaign doing? And from our perspective, we're killing it. We, you know, we're driving people here. People are clicking apply, but they're not necessarily seeing that many finished applications. So that's usually when marketing and operations need to kind of sit down and have a conversation as to what they're seeing. You know, like, what is the holdup? We're seeing, you know, 100 people start the application and only 20 finish it. Why? What, you know, where's the bottleneck? What's happening? Uh, I think that's really good conversation to have. I used to have one with, we used to do it all the time with another one of my clients where we would sit down monthly and review all the you know, three key uh, processes that they wanted to kind of, you know, uh, membership, uh, lending, uh, and checking. And we kind of wanted to see where people are falling off. And we brought it really good. We were able to kind of really raise up their completion rate. Uh, and it worked out really well. Um, I'd like to see that with more people kind of being involved with more operations instead of, you know, like the lending team being upset because they didn't bring in 100 applications that month when we actually had 200 people start the application. So marketing did what they're supposed to do. We brought people there. They brought people in. They engaged in everybody in public. They got the key people down the sales funnel to want to apply. And they got them to actually click the apply button, but they're not following the process all the way through. I think that's the key thing is trying to figure out why they're not. Um, I know we have something at panels like the Lexi the Bestie to kind of go through that process and work with them to see where we're hitting speed bumps like what is causing people to stop and i think that's that's important you know it's not you know a lot of marketing people they don't have um they don't have that ability to just say hey i gave you 100 applicants a lot of marketing people get like like well they're not finished they're not completing the application so you're not doing what your job is and i kind of always think of that as ah, no that's kind of what marketing's supposed to do we're, we're bringing you know they're bringing people in we just need to work internally to see why they're not, you know, finishing the process. I, I, yeah. Right. yeah, that makes total sense. And it's, it's really difficult to communicate to other departments just exactly how they need to make conversions, because really that's not the job of the marketer. The marketer gets them to the door and they have to open it. Yeah. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of times where we'd be talking with specific uh, departments and they'd say, Oh, it's very important that we know, what branch they want to work from or they want to work with when a lot of people if they're applying online that's not even a thought in their head right now right. to make that like one of the first things that they have to do and they're like oh well i'll come back to this later i don't care about the branch right now and they can't proceed because that's one of those must fill out questions mm -hmm. you know, that's something that you know let them figure that out later you know get them in the door get them really interested in kind of taking that final step completely Yep, and um, Carolyn, my next question is for you. Uh, clients often comment that they do not see marketing working. How do we measure and track how traditional and digital marketing efforts are attributed? And um, what's the real difference between uh, tracking digital and traditional? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it goes back to what Ryan was says, said, you know, sort of tracking that application process. But even before that, being able to track results year over year, month over month, um and start with a goal like when before you ever even launch your campaign you know look at you know last year during this month and you know last month during this time look at we ran a promotion at this point and we didn't run a promotion and start with a goal say we expect lift over business as usual to be this you know put in those numbers we expect this many applications this many closed and you know this this dollar amount. And then you have it. You can be held accountable to something. And if you find you're not meeting those goals, figure out were your goals too high, or are your campaigns not doing what they're supposed to do? And then you can adjust. Um, digital is great because you can track it all in real time. Um, it's it's why we love digital. <laughs> but. Traditional too, I mean, if you're sending out a mailer, put a QR code on it, put a promo code on it, put a unique URL so that you can drive them to that 
landing page and push them into that digital trackable funnel. Um, you know, if you're putting out a print ad or, you know, you're at an event and you're handing out a flyer, like that, that's all something you can add to it. You can also, you know, unique phone numbers. See how many phone numbers come into that special number devoted to that campaign. There's so many things you can do to track and some of it's more indirect, some of it's more manual. If you send out a mailer and they're not going to that landing page, they're taking that postcard into the branch and doing that old fashioned thing, then great. But then at the end of the month say, okay, all of these accounts were opened and compared to the mail list, 27 of them match up or none of them do or a ridiculous amount of them do. That's, I mean, it's, it's more manual labor, but in the end, it's once again, that ability to prove yourself to those other departments and say, hey, we brought these in, what happened from there? Um, and then also it, having that goal holds you accountable. So yeah. next year you say, okay, we need to make our goal a little less, or we need to put more money into it, or we need to try different avenues. Yeah, it's it, even, even if it, if, if leads aren't coming from uh, QR codes on mailers, for example, it's better than nothing. It's better than not doing it at all. Uh, I mean, you want to be able to track in some way. Um, there was a time before digital. And yeah, right. I, I imagine they had to measure at least a little bit. So there are ways. They're just, it's slightly more conjecture. Okay. Well, and this is my final question that I want to ask both of you. And this is an, a, definitely an interesting one for me and something that I see all the time. Uh, what happens when there are too many cooks in the kitchen? In other words, what happens when too many different departments are making marketing decisions? And how can marketing better advocate for themselves? Um, I think what helps best for something like this is making sure marketing has a seat at the table. Making sure they have a good relationship with the C-suite and have a partner on the board. Um, you know, I work with someone who has some really good connections within their, uh, you know, institution. So when she does get hit by too many people saying 500 different things, she can level set and go and talk to the C-suite and go, hey, this is what we're hearing, but we really need to focus on X. Let's have this conversation. Let's talk to the board. Let's get everyone on the same page. Because if you have five people telling you five different things and you're going in five different directions, neither of them are going to, none of them are going to work. It's, you know, you, you, it's like, you know, a hydra. Everyone's head's going in different directions. There's not one centralized thought. And it kind of, in a way, when it circles back to too many cooks in the kitchen of even one thing, if you're having 10 different people telling you 10 different pieces of feedback and on, a, on a campaign, that's like no one giving you feedback, especially if they're, con you know, if they're contradicting each other. You know, and I know we run into that sometimes where we'll get feedback from one section uh, about a campaign, and then the next year we'll get another feedback about the same sec from a different group, and they'll often kind of you know butt heads and like, okay, so are we deleting this or are we not deleting this? Mm -hmm. Are we going with this image or we're going with that image? And I think it really helps to have a conversation with the marketing team, like, all right, guys, let's see what everyone's really thinking, and make sure we get like the, you know, no matter how many cooks are in the kitchen, there's going to be at least usually one person who is really the decision maker. And let's make sure we kind of talk to them, get them on board with what we're trying to do so that we're not trying to appease, you know, five different people. And Carolyn, have you had the same experience? Um, you want to talk yes. and speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, when every person in the bank needs to sign off on a campaign, it, it, it'll get launched after the campaign is over. Um, it <laughs> really, you know, you have your key stakeholders. Like if, if it's a mortgage campaign, yeah, mortgage should see it. They, they should, you know, say, yes, this is the product that is being promoted. It's spoken about in the correct way. The, the details make sense in alignment with what we do here. Compliance obviously has to sign off because you don't want to throw something out there that, you know, is going to raise a bunch of flags and, you know, get you in trouble later down the line. You want to make sure you're putting the right marketing out there, but the same time, you know, I, I don't want every mortgage lender telling me what my image should be. Like, 
what font should be, what mm-hmm. like marketing is the gatekeeper to the brand. They mm-hmm. they are the gate to marketing. They they're, they're doing their job, and so that really needs to you need to stand up for yourself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> making boundaries isn't impolite. It's really you know we appreciate these other teams for the work they do. We would never step in and try and be something else. And it's just standing up and saying, we want that same level of appreciation. Right. And, and the different departments, they need to know that marketing's putting their best foot forward always for the brand. And, um, you know, they need to be able to make final decisions on, on branding and any ads that go out and stuff like that. Well, um, do you guys have any closing thoughts on that question? I think just, just in general, I think mm-hmm. it's, good for everyone to see within the institution marketing not as necessarily like a cost like we have to pay this much money for marketing but more of what marketing can bring in in the sense of you know we generally make this many uh bringing this much for lending for loan now we're bringing this much more so you know they're helping to do this they're helping to bring in the revenue they're helping to bring in uh, deposits that I think is key to kind of let everyone know that about marketing. It's not just a, it's not just something that they're paying to get, you know, cause they have to, it's something that they really need to increase and they're, they're, they're part of the team, not, you know. Exactly. All on the same team here. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. I heard someone say the other day that, you know, being in marketing is like being a server at a restaurant. And sometimes it certainly can feel like that. Um, and I think there's, there's a way to, step it up and not be an order taker but be part of the conversation and part of that is you know going into those monthly meetings going into those board meetings and saying this is what we did these were the results and consistently getting that point across will start to make everyone understand your role at the bank or credit union absolutely well awesome thank you both very much um This has been really insightful and really sheds light on some of the challenges that marketers face and how they can work more efficiently with different departments within their organization to better reach their goals. Um, So uh, that concludes our webinar today. I want to thank all of everyone who joined us um, and please feel free to reach out with any questions that you may have. Um, If you have any questions, my email is jpetroselli at canosmarketing.com. And um, I'll be able to answer your question or, uh, or direct it to Ryan or Carol- Carolyn. Thank you. Yeah, if anyone wants to reach out directly, I'm C. Pittman at panosmarketing.com. Yeah, and uh, with me, I'm R. Weber, two Bs, at panosmarketing.com. All right, awesome. Thank you guys again, and uh, we'll see you all next time.